Uh, dear colleagues, uh, my name is Paulo Sakai. I am from uh, Sao Paulo University Medical School uh, in Brazil. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Professor Inoue and uh, the organizing committee for the kind invitation to participate in this important event. I am going to uh, moderate this session named the ZIPOM about Zinker's diverticulum. Uh, as you know, Zinker's diverticulum is considered a uh, herniation of pharyngoesophageal mucosa, and uh, it's not a common disease, and it affects mostly elderly. Uh, and uh, in my experience, the oldest patient was 100 years old. The endoscopic treatment was tried first in 1917 uh, by Dr. Mosher, and in 1937 by Dr. Seifert, both from Germany. But due to complications followed by mortality, it was abandoned. And in 1960, the endoscopic treatment was reintroduced by Dr. Dolman and the Madsen in Sweden, who utilized a rich bilip laryngoscope. I personally introduced the use you know, of a flexible endoscope for this treatment in 1982, which means almost four decades ago. And it is interesting uh, to mention the situation of that period. The patient was around 60 years and had a severe pulmonary insufficiency and did not fit to undergo to surgical treatment. My boss, Dr. Uh, a surgeon, Dr. Professor Pinotti called me and they ordered, Paul, you had to treat this patient because I couldn't find any brave anesthesiologist to give anesthesia for this patient. So I performed my first case under deep sedation and using needle knife and the monopolar electrosurgical device cutting the septum that separated the diverticulum from the esophagus. Uh, surprisingly, the follow-up was quite good and the remission of dysphagia. Of course, flexible endoscope and the modern accessories have changed a lot the management in recent years. Uh, 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 so we have in this session today, two brilliant experts to talk about this issue. The first speaker, Professor Thierry Ponchon from Lyon, head of the gastroenterology department, an active member of the European Society of Endoscopy and a great enthusiast of therapeutic endoscopy. The second speaker, Professor Haruhiro Inoue, professor of surgery of Showa University in Tokyo and well-known around the world due to his many important inventions about endoscopic techniques. I, I, I think and you know, we can open for discussion after the two presentations. So it's my honor to announce the first speaker, Professor Ponchon, who is going to talk about the critical review of the diverticulotomy results. Please, Professor Ponchon. Okay, thank you very much, Paolo. I think more or less like a student in front of you, because you, are, you have a pioneer of flexible endoscopy for the treatment of uh, Zenkar diverticulum, and also because uh, Haru is the inventor of POEM. So this, this, um, this presentation will be more or less an introduction to that poem. And I will explain the different problems related to endoscopic septotomy. I have no disclosure. First of all, I will speak about endoscopic septotomy and not of, of diverticulotomy. Of course, this is the same, but just to be clear. So it does consist to open the mucosa, the submucosa, but the muscular layer in between the diverticulum and the esophagus. So it's a complete cut of, of, a, of a septum. And uh, you don't preserve the, mucosal, the, the mucosa. 
And it is an introduction for me to Z poem, this presentation. I will explain why. There is a first concern, the results. I will distinguish single arm versus comparative uh, studies uh, and surgery. First of all, single arm studies. These are the initial studies. Of course, although you are here, yes. But uh, if you have a look on these, these studies, I will not spend too much time. Different tools, you see, more or less good success rate and very different rate of morbid, morbidity, but no data on recurrence. Now, more recent studies, larger, more recent. You see 150 cases, for example. And the device, more or less the same. Diverticuloscope, and then you close the defect with a clips. But different tool, nevertheless, to cut the mucosa and the muscular layer. Success rate, quite good, sufficient. But some morbidity between 2 to 8% and high recurrence rate, especially within the study of Costamania. Now, meta analysis. Morbidity 11%, so not, not null, and recurrence rate 100, 11%. So, and adverse event rates decrease with larger sample, whereas recurrence rates increase. Paradoxically, another uh, medical meta analysis with needle light morbidity rate 13 percent, and of course, higher with larger diverticulum, more than four centimeters in comparison to smaller diverticulum, mainly bleeding, but perforation also seven percent, and recurrence rate 14 percent. So, immediate response sufficient, but some rate of morbidity and some problem with recurrence. Now, comparative studies versus surgery. You have different surgical procedure, surgical diverticulectomy, so you perform, uh, uh, you open the skin and at, at the level of a cervix and you, you remove the diverticulum, radic diverticulum. Or you perform a septotomy, mainly rigid, using a stapler or using a laser. So these are the three arms, the three are uh, uh, competitors, surgical diverticulotomy, surgical septotomy, endoscopic septotomy. First, within surgery. In fact, one meta-analysis, no difference of outcomes between diverticulectomy and septotomy using laser or using stapler. Now, surgical diverticulectomy versus endoscopic septotomy. In this case, this was more or less, uh, we thought it could be the case. Lower morbidity with septotomy, with, uh, with endoscopic septotomy, but better long-term results with diverticulectomy. Of course, in this series, they conclude that nevertheless, endoscopy should be performed first. And there was one meta-analysis, which also demonstrate a lower rate of complication with endoscopic septotomy, but a higher rest of symptom recurrence. Now, finally, surgical rigid septotomy versus endoscopic septotomy. So basically, they are, they are using the same principles. But in fact, when you use a rigid endoscope, you, you are obliged to have an extreme neck extension the, due to the size of a step leg. You, you don't visualize perfectly the site of, of, uh, of a treatment, and also the current staple design finally results in a residual push. Advantage of flexible endoscopy in comparison, more telluroid approach, direct vision, perfect vision, and myotomy can be theoretically more complete. But meta-analysis, comparing endoscopic to rigid diverticulotomy, no difference for infection perforation, but higher recurrence rate with endoscopy versus surgery. So this, what, what are the consequences when you analyze the results? In fact, I already explained that there is a quite high rate of recurrence and some rate of morbidity. Nevertheless, PSG suggests that flexible endoscopic treatment should be the first line therapy for patients with zinctus diverticulum, of course, symptomatic. But nevertheless, there are two problems the risk of recurrence and mobility. And there is a balance. This is the symptom. 
If you cut the, the, the septum too deep, of course, there is a risk that you could enter or create a space with a mediastinum, such as in this case. And then you increase the risk of morbidity. But nevertheless, you have less recurrence. So clearly, there is a balance between morbidity and recurrence. And this is the problem with endoscopic septotomy. And risk factors for recurrence are the size of the diverticulum, male patients, symptoms intensity, and duration. But above all, the, the, the major factor is the role of the depth of a section. So that's why recently uh, it has been published or recommended to perform complete myotomy. And even EAG recommends performing a complete myotomy when you perform endoscopic septotomy. But frankly speaking, it's more a wish than the reality because you rely on the size of a diverticulum and it is recommended to less to let him place three millimeter above the, the, the bottom of a, of a diverticulum. So it is a wish, but not the reality. When you want to perform a complete myotomy, you should cut until the bottom here. You should cut the total septum, such as in this case. But then you see, uh, you see a, 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 a distance, you see an opening between the two muscular layers. It has been recently published. Uh, uh, this technique has been recently published in 19 patients with some mobility, but quite high success rate and quite success, high success rate six months later and more recently five patients. So it is interesting, but maybe more at risk. Finally, how to improve and how to manage with this balance. Maybe we, we have to evaluate during the procedure the cricopharyngeal distensibility and adapt the length of a, of a, of a section to optimize the technique. So these are, this is an endoflip before and endoflip afterwards. Another possibility is to rely on barium swallow imaging measurements. And it has been recently published, but I, I must say that it is a little too theoretical. So this was my main concern, the balance between recurrence and morbidity. Now, there are plenty of techniques, and this is also a concern, maybe too many techniques. And there were recently two interesting uh, editorial. First one, the title, different tests all leading to the same flower. And more, more interesting, flexible endoscopic zincar diverticulum treatments, too many in the toolbox. Why not? First of all, you have diverticuloscope, and then you have distal attachment. So diverticuloscope and distal attachment. In fact, if you analyze the, the, the results, no difference within this meta-analysis, and it has been confirmed in a recent comparative studies, no difference concerning the success rate, but you see the success rate was not so good. 68% with a diverticuloscope versus 60% with a distal attachment. So maybe the reality is not, the truth is not as good as within the randomized study. And this one more or less, a uh, 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 study from a tertiary center. Now the clips, the base of a septotomy to protect against the risk of mediastinitis. mediastinitis. Meta-analysis, no difference concerning perforation if clips or no clips. And EAG suggests to, de to deploy clips at the base of a septotomy. I do it, but it has to be dictated by endoscopist practice or clinical need. But in fact, this, I think it's also a wish because there is always a perforation in sense. So it's to say that you should look at a perforation, I think it's, it's, it's nonsense for me. Okay, I'm sorry because I was president of EH. Different tech knives and techniques, needle knife, APC, hook knife, TTI from, from ARU, double incision and snare resection and window technique. These are more or less the tech, same technique. You reject partly the, muscle, the mucosal layer to have a better visualization of a muscular layer. And here, yes, it works. And this was published by my, my, my team. The tools, in comparison to a knife, you can use a stapler, flexible stapler, and you can use a lot different scissors. And we see now a lot of publications. So it means that you have a lot of techniques and which one is the best, nobody knows. And probably this is a problem. And the third, the, Sorry, this is the third component, the small diverticulum. When you have a small diverticulum, less than 20 millimeter in deep, or maybe 10 millimeter, or just 
you, you have a feeling that there is, there is, a, there is a, a small diverticulum, but difficult to see. There, is, there, there are some problems, limited space, no anatomical landmarks. So you can cut adequately and safely. And safely. Nevertheless, EAG suggests that symptomatic zinca of any size are amenable to flexible endoscopic treatment. But it's more wish than variety because less than one centimeter is, is a very it's a diverticulum very difficult to do. Nevertheless, Repici recently reported to the treatment of short septum, and that they have a high clinical success with no morbidity. And you see, the mean size of the diverticulum was 17 millimeter. No recurrence after 12 months. But frankly speaking, it was more myotomy and closer to the presentation of ARU than a real septotomy because there is no symptom. And this is the problem. This is probably the second major concern. This was the, this was the, the slide from Alexandro Alera Picci. Inject, but following injection, you don't see any septum. Then you cut and then you perform a myotomy and you close by clip. So these are my conclusions. I have nothing against uh, uh, diverticulotomy and septotomy uh, uh, parallel. This was a great procedure and very helpful. Nevertheless, we need to improve. And maybe Z point is the way to improve because really concerning septotomy, there is a difficult, challenging balance between, between recurrence, which is quite high, and morbidity. There is a problem related to small diverticulum and maybe, but it's a pity. Maybe we have too many techniques and we, we don't have clear recommendations concerning these too many techniques. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ponchon, for a nice and uh, very interesting uh, presentation. So it's my honor and the privilege to announce the second speaker, Professor Halu Hiro Inoue. Please, Dr. Inoue. So, uh, Paolo, uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind introduction to me. And um, the, uh, uh, yes, so uh, Thierry, thank you very much. A uh, 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 great extensive review of the uh, uh, Tsenka poem or septectomy, sept septotomy, uh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, can we share my slides? Okay, I will try to share my slides. Wait a moment, please. Okay, I would like to talk about the uh, Tsenka poem, uh, the poem, and the uh, simple technique and the simple approach, I think. So this is my uh, COI. Um, so this is the, uh, um, I think it's a first report of endoscopic uh, incision uh, for Tsenka diverticulum. Uh, this was uh, reported uh, by the uh, Dr. Ishioka and the Paolo Sakai. So um, I, I'm so honored <laughs> you, you are the moderator of this session. So uh, this paper is a, uh, you uh, reported the 42 uh, uh, first experience and the, uh, uh, in this paper you mentioned, so uh, all this uh, dysphagia symptom disappeared. So it's a great recurrence is a just a three. So a very low rate of a recurrence that less than 10%. So it's a great uh, experience at the data at the time of 1995. So um, you are directly approached to the septum um, using a flexible endoscope. So this is our uh, case. So, um, we approach to the uh, septum directly uh, using the uh, uh, distal attachment. So in this case, we use a soft uh, attachment, but anyway, so uh, first the uh, resect, dissect the mucosa. And then after dissection of mucosa, we are approaching to the muscle and then uh, cut the muscle like now. So distal attachment, uh, uh, keeps a uh, good uh, endoscopic vision, so uh, we can do it. Of course, so um, diverticuloscope or some other device to fix uh, this septum, uh, they are working, I think, I believe. But so uh, 
just using the distal attachment, we can do this. So, so we continue dissecting the septum. And then, so as uh, Thierry mentioned, so we have, so last cut, we cut all the cricopharyngeals. And then after that, we continue to dissect the esophageal muscle layer uh, continuously. But so, uh, of course, after this, we have to close the uh, defect of the uh, mucosa um, to close it tightly. Otherwise, the patient potentially becomes the mediastinitis. So, okay. So, um, um, uh, another track. So, um, I so we developed the uh, uh, submucosal tunneling, so POEM procedure, uh, per oral approach uh, to the, uh, okay. So uh, uh, for esophageal treatment of the esophageal carriage, um, so POEM is a kind of uh, submucosal endoscopy. So submucosal endoscopy is a totally same to our surface space endoscopy. Um, after establishment of the poem uh, for the esophageal acarasia, um, some mucosal endoscopy, uh, we had a several offshoots of it. So one of the offshoot of the poem is a tinker poem. Um, firstly, the uh, poem was itself reported in 2010, and the uh, poet or star was uh, uh, reported the 12. And then the Gaswick poem reported the 13th, and then Tinker uh, poem, Z poem was reported the 16th. So step by step, we uh, have the next uh, application of the submucosal endoscopy. So uh, first, um, as far as I know, uh, uh, the first report of the Tinker poem uh, was this one. So. Uh, Kyung Lin Li, Dr. Li, and the, uh, uh, maybe he is uh, working together with uh, Dr. Zhou Pinfo. So they reported uh, their first experience of uh, a Z poem uh, in a gas journal of gastroenterology uh, uh, 2016. So, anyway, I uh, create a submucosal tunnel. So they're nicely approaching the septum muscle. And then after that, close the mucosa entry using creeps. So um, mucosa incision point and the uh, um, uh, septum dissection is uh, so some distance. So that 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 may be a little bit the technical uh, difficulty of this procedure. And the uh, another doctor, uh, doctors from uh, Mexico, so Mexico, so they are reported the Tinka poem as well. And the uh, um, uh, theory also mentions that uh, Dr. Alessandro Repici uh, from uh, Milano, so he reported so direct incision. Uh, mucosa incision onto the septum mucosa. He reported it. So, uh, 2020, I think. So, um, uh, last year he reported. So, uh, we follow uh, their concept. So, this is a, a illustration um, com uh, compared to the uh, conventional, so uh, established by uh, Dr. Uh, Paolo Sakai, so endoscopic septotomy. So in, in the uh, uh, Paolo's technique, so we did so far, um, uh, approach endoscopically and then cut the septum. So together with the mucosa and the muscle layer. And then uh, the point is a uh, uh, theory mentioned. Uh, so, so get a good effectiveness, uh, it's better to go the uh, deep. So bottom of the uh, diverticulum closely, but so if if we approach deeper and deeper, it's a balance uh, between the effectiveness and the uh, potential risk of a mediastinitis. So uh, the clipping becomes very important to avoid the potential risk of a mediastinitis. 
So compared to uh, this uh, conventional or so original uh, Pablo Sakai's approach, so uh, Tenka poem, uh, we do like this. So th this technique is uh, already uh, reported by the descriptive by the uh, Alessandro Repici. So we first inject the solution at the top of the septum, a submucosal injection, and then create a submucosal cushion. And then uh, we place a mucosal incision only, and then approach so, uh, the submucosal space, then cut the muscle. So uh, septotomy, uh, septectomy, so septotomy, and the muscle, muscle layer dissection uh, should be deep enough. Uh, but uh, we try to preserve the mucosa uh, flap, the both side. Uh, then, so uh, in this situation, so Tenka poem, uh, closure of the mucosa becomes easier. So because of uh, we uh, preserve lots of uh, mucosal flap. Uh, but so uh, of course, as so illustrated here, so uh, opening of the uh, diverticulum uh, with so distance is uh, limited than a conventional technique. Yeah, but anyway, so muscle layer has already been dissected. So uh, we uh, also hope uh, this uh, procedure uh, works good. And the, I would like to mention a little bit about the uh, difference of uh, Tenka diverticulum and the Kirian Janison uh, diverticulum. So everybody know well uh, whether Tenka is a, uh, so description is an original description is a posterior uh, diverticulum at the level of a Kilian triangle. And the uh, so Kilian Janison uh, uh, diverticulum is a lateral, lateral diverticulum. And the, uh, um, they are coming there. Um, well, it's just, it's just some discussion, but so just the uh, um, uh, oblique muscle area, so this uh, lateral diverticulum is uh, coming out. So anyway, so both two procedure, the treatment is the same. So this is our case of a 40 year old female. Uh, she has the uh, diverticulum like this endoscopically 10 to 11 o'clock direction. And then a uh, food impacted in the diverticulum uh, lumen. That, uh, you can see the septum. So uh, valine swallow identify the deposit of the valine at the uh, patient neck. And also a uh, CAT scan demonstrate the uh, cavities across to the uh, trachea. And the light uh, beside, side of the uh, uh, esophagus. But uh, so a little bit uh, ventral, lateral ventral. But anyway, so this is the uh, endoscopic view of the septum, right after moving the all the uh, uh, deposit out. And then, so in this case, uh, we approach uh, like this. So injection, submucosal injection directly onto the sept septum top and then create a mucosal blade. Then we place a mucosal incision. Uh, now uh, we are uh, dissecting some submucosal fibers. Anyway, so saline plus blue dye. Then uh, we can see submucosal layer very well. Then uh, we approach submucosal layer uh, with a uh, distal attachment. Now we are start starting, uh, we are starting the cutting the uh, septum muscle uh, using, a, in this case, using a, a splay coagulation, uh, we are cutting the muscle fibers. Then approach gradually, gradually deeper, uh, but the mucosal cut is limited only the entrance uh, into the submucosal space. Now we continue cutting the uh, uh, muscle layer so cricopharyngeal has already been dissected and behind we can see mediastinum. So uh, we can cut uh, the, uh, uh, as much as possible muscle layer. Okay. 
Then after that, so uh, we have a nice mucosal flap, both sides. So uh, we are trying to place the clip, but uh, we have uh, we control the uh, mucosal uh, uh, dissection length and the enough uh, the remaining uh, mucosa, so we can close it uh, relatively technically easily and tightly. So this is a technique uh, of us. So uh, this is a two months uh, after uh, Tenka poem. This is a septum. And the uh, two months later, some mucosa attacks each other very well. And the uh, um, uh, so uh, septum uh, has already gone. So this is the bubbling swallower, the same patient. So we cannot observe any uh, deposit of the volume at the level of a divertigram. This is a surface. Okay, so uh, this is uh, our conclusions. So uh, think a poem. Um, of course, the concept is the same uh, to original, uh, Pablo's original technique. So um, we follow the original uh, concept. Uh, we want to cut the septum muscle, and the, but uh, try to preserve uh, the mucosa as much as possible. Um, the, uh, so one of the benefits, I think, a direct approach to the uh, uh, septum mucosa and the uh, muscle cut in a sub muscle cut uh, will be done uh, in the submucosal space. The point is a uh, closure, closure, yeah, technically easier, I, I feel. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> Professor Inoue. And uh, now we can open for discussion. And uh, it's a really very interesting session. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Uh, Pochon, uh, I, I think uh, your presentation was quite good, really uh, very interesting. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, my question is about the clipping. Clipping, uh, in my opinion, is a uh, very important uh, uh, progress of this procedure because uh, uh, with the clipping, you can cut it deeper and uh, you can avoid the perforation. And on the other hand, the patient can resume the uh, oral uh, uh, feeding uh, earlier than the usual septotomy. Uh, do you think it's uh, progress or sometimes it doesn't need because uh, about, uh, according to the European society guideline, it is necessary only when there is some uh, risk enough or, or suspicious of perforation. What do you think about it? Okay, I think, of course, it's an excellent question. F first of all, I, I don't think the ESG guideline is very clear because there is a perforation in any case. So they recommend to clip if there is a perforation, but basically we do a perforation. So basically we should clip, okay. First point. Second point is that, uh, of course, it has not been demonstrated that we have less side effects when we clip. But personally, maybe we don't have sufficient data. Huh? Personally, I always clip. Because yes, I perform a very deep septotomy. I go more up till the bottom, okay? I, I do a complete septotomy to get a better result. So then I'm obliged to, to clip. Okay, so then I recommend personality to clip. I think the main difference between septotomy and, and, and um, Z poem, that you better close the mucosa with a clip following Z poem because you close only the mucosa because there is no more mucosal layer, totally disappear. So you close the mucosa adequately, perfectly. When you want to close a, a septotomy, you don't close perfectly because you still have some muscular layer and you, you are obliged to close laterally. So for me, the main advantage of Z poem, the technique is the same, more or less. 
you cut the mescololaya, but the main advantage is that you better close the mucosal defect because you don't open the, the, muc the mucosa too large. Do you see my point? This makes the difference, paradoxically. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. There's a, another question is in relation to the size of the diverticulum. Uh, you are right. And when, the, when you said that the, the, the small, uh, less than two centimeters of, of zinc diverticulum, sometimes it's very, very small, but not very symptomatic. And uh, uh, it's sometimes not easy to, to treat this case. I remember once uh, a patient, a very fat patient, a short neck, diabetic, and uh, with other comorbidity, and uh, uh, relatives with uh, uh, with uh, lawyers. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I I I really I declined to do septotomy in this case, and uh, I prefer to inject the Botox. Botox injection only on the on the, uh, the, the muscle, and uh, in this case, in particular case, it, it works well. Uh, of course, it, the patient had a hoarseness <laughs> for, <laughs> for during three months, and uh, but uh, it's an, an alter alternative in this case because uh, a short uh, uh, zinc diabetic is quite difficult. Yeah, you're right, uh, and, and uh, 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 you have no anatomical landmarks, so you cut blindly, okay? First point, and you never know. So that's why in this case, I think it's better to use the Z poem, okay? Because you open the mucosa, and then you enter uh, within the submucosal space, and you cut adequately the septum, okay? Uh, the the cricopharyngeal uh, muscle. Okay. So, it's, so it's much better than to to perform a septotomy, first point. So, and, and the second point is that you, you, are, you don't see so well. It's not so easy to see. You never know where is exactly the septum to cut. And, and second point is that on the opposite, when you have a long diverticulum, very deep, if you use a septotomy, you cut blindly, blindly until the bottom, but, but it, frankly speaking, it is a very risky procedure on the opposite. If you just open the, 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 musco, the mucosa, you perform, uh, you perform a mammiotomy. Even in the, if the diverticulum is deep, you succeed and there is no risk. So I'm quite convinced that in both cases, very large and very small, Z poem is, 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 more, is less at risk and uh, uh, enough sufficient, enough efficient, enough effective, and maybe more effective. Yeah, I think uh, the Alessandro repeats technique is quite good for this case. In a short in a single diverticulum. But it, it is not a septotomy. It is a myotomy, finally. It's a, it's a Z poem. It's called septotomy, yeah. but it's not a real septotomy. It's a hybrid, a hybrid <laughs> technique. Yes. Do you think so, Dr. Inoue? Uh, yes. Alessandro uh, repeats technique is a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, yes, uh, theory mentioned. I, I totally agree that the, theory is a, so original concept was a septotomy, uh, but the, the purpose of the septotomy is to cut the mus septum muscle, not, not, not cut the mucosa. So um, yes, a combination of, uh, yes, a myotomy. The, the, yes, uh, word of myotomy is a more direct, uh, directly uh, reflect the uh, performance. But, but so um, procedure itself is a very, uh, Yes, a similar one. The principle of the procedure is uh, totally equal to the uh, uh, Paro's original. So I think uh, uh, cutting the muscle as deep as possible, a total dissection of the cricopharyngeal muscle is a key point of the procedure. As a, but, but, so uh, as a, yes, uh, Thierry uh, nicely mentioned that the, uh, we have no landmarks when we perform the myotomy the, at the distal end of the cricopharyngeals. It's uh, not easy to identify uh, anatomically and uh, endoscopic view. So uh, until, uh, so not <laughs> until good enough. So uh, we continue to dissect the uh, cricopharyngeals. At the time, at the time, so um, 
So conventional technique, I myself uh, have, uh, uh, so of course, we definitely trace uh, uh, clips uh, to uh, close the mucosa defect. Uh, but even though the, uh, this area is a patient swallow and the move, move, move. So um, uh, after procedure, I myself uh, a little bit uh, afraid of becoming the uh, uh, mediastinitis. So mediastinitis is uh, including a minor, minor mediastinitis. So a few days of fever lap or uh, some uh, inflammatory uh, um, um, uh, mediators increasing. So such kind of a mild mediastinitis, I'm afraid. So uh, we are now, and so I, as a hybrid procedure of the uh, um, uh, mucosal cut and the myotomy, then uh, like a, a Tsenka poem, so we can close a, a mucosal de defect, defect uh, more tightly um, yes. with the confidence. So uh, it's a, uh, I think, uh, um, so one of the advantage of the uh, Tenka poem. But so original concept is the same. Mm. Yeah, uh, Haru. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, the the Z poem is really a, a very nice uh, technique, and uh, it's really very similar to surgical uh, resection, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, uh, the problem is that the, in a large uh, diverticulum, the mucosa is not being cut. Uh, so uh, sometimes the redundant mucosa they can uh, cause again uh, a pseudo diverticulum. In the, in the pseudo diverticulum, it may uh, cause a dysphagia sometimes. I have seen uh, in a few cases. And uh, I think if you can improve the technique, uh, Haru, you can do it and uh, uh, resect the mucosa, the redundant mucosa. So it's perfect. It's like in a surgical treatment. Yeah, yeah, surgical treatment is a diverticulectomy plus myotomy. Yeah, and the uh, Pablo, it's a, you are mentioned a very important point. So a big diverticulum, in the case of a big sinker, so at that time, so we have to extend the mucosa incision a little bit, and then open the mucosa or uh, um, septum of the mucosa should also dissect it a little bit more uh, compared to the small diverticulum. So that's a point. So then uh, we can uh, arrange the procedure, um, your original and the, uh, uh, it's a little bit uh, extension of the myotomy. And so it, it, it is it, easy because Sorry, Aru. It is easy because the, the section is transversal. You can close easily transversal. When it is longitudinal, like a septotomy, it's more difficult to close. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, also. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, uh, so, well, uh, excuse me. So, uh, can we uh, cut? So, it used to be we cut the uh, mucosa together. So at that time, so we are so a little bit afraid. We approach a very deep of the uh, uh, diverticulum, bottom of the divert, close to bottom of the diverticulum. We are a little bit afraid. So, but the, uh, uh, if we are going behind the mucosa, so uh, we, we we can be uh, mildly much easier, I think. But but anyway, anyway. So uh, combination of the both technique is a, a good to uh, solve this uh, so very important disease. And uh, finally, Halu, my congratulations for your Killian Jamison uh, diverticulum treatment. It's a, a quite a really very nice uh, technique. And as you know, the, the symptom of a patient with a Killian Jamison is not uh, dysphagia, it's halitosis. Because, mm -hmm. uh, so this is the problem of the patients. And uh, the first uh, uh, attempt is to do the septotomy. I did in septotomy in some case, but in a, a very, very short septotomy, <laughs> because in, in reality, I'm cutting the muscle of the esophagus, esophageal uh, wall. So I was really uh, very careful to cut the septum in this case. But you did in a very nice procedure. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you very much. So Pablo, you mentioned a very important point. 
and the, uh, as uh, in the Kilian Jamison, uh, we cut the uh, upper upper esophageal muscle, esophagus muscle layer. So um, so this technique is very important. So just the uh, mucosa cut and the going uh, beneath uh, the mucosa and then approach to the esophageal muscle layer. Yes, it's, yeah. it was excellent, Arwan, and such as your course. Huh? Despite we are not in Tokyo, we we appreciate a lot this course huh? with different techniques, different experts. Congratulations Thank for you. both. Now uh, the final uh, uh, comments for both that the the the, the original principle uh, uh, of the procedure is the same. The the the, the same because the Purpose is the wide communication from the diverticulum to the esophageal lumen. So you have to cut the septum. When you have you cut the septum, you have to cut the muscle, the quick pharyngeal muscle. So I, I think the progress is is a technique how to do uh, the, this this wide communication between uh, esophageal lumen and the diverticulum. And uh, the, the, I, I think the, the, the primary principle uh, continues the same. So, any question? And no, no, I totally no. agree with your comment. The principle is uh, totally the same. Yes, but, 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 but nevertheless, the closure is better paradoxically with that poem. And this makes the difference. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's more effective, and you can cut it much more my my otomim. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think uh, are we on time? So thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much, Paolo, and the theory. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.